Have you ever worked on a visual effects shot where you were just kind of guessing to get the lighting to match your footage? And then in compositing, you're endlessly tweaking stuff to get things looking right? Okay, shift the gain, a little bit less blue, a little bit more gamma. What is gamma? Gamma the hue of the gain, lift it up, too much blue, lift it down, gain, gamma the gain. This is how I used to work, but not anymore. With my new workflow, I can confidently match the lighting between my footage and CGI elements. This works in different lighting conditions too. So I'll break down this entire workflow, which uses a few simple tools when filming, along with the ACES color system to achieve these great results. Let's jump in. So you can follow along, you can download this workflow graphic along with the footage, photo, and blender assets for free at the link in the description. Now the success of this workflow begins with a careful filming process. For my main camera, I use a Panasonic GH5 with a V-Log color space, which gives me very flat footage. And I make sure to set my white balance to a constant value so that it's not changing throughout the shot. I film my footage, and then right afterwards, without changing any lighting, camera settings, or general camera position, I'll put this color checker in the shot and take some footage of it. This is the X-Rite Color Checker Classic. You don't absolutely need a color checker, you can use a white balance card or nothing at all, but a color checker will provide the best reference. Next, I'll keep the color checker in place and set up my 360 camera close to where my CG elements will be in the scene. With this 360 camera, and most 360 cameras nowadays, I can shoot multiple photos at different exposures. So in the end, we have our main footage, footage of our color checker, and our 360 photos, including our color checker. To start, let's create our HDRI. First, we need to merge all our 360 photos into one image. Some 360 cameras come with free programs to do this, but I use Photoshop. I'll merge all the photos together using the Merge to HDR Pro function. I'll select my individual photos and then make sure to uncheck the alignment option since we know the 360 camera was stationary, and then let's let Photoshop merge these images together. I'll uncheck this box, hit OK, and here we have our HDRI. At this point, we're not going to worry about adjusting the HDRI. We simply save it out as a radiance file. Next, we want to convert both the HDRI and our footage into the same color space. To do this, we are going to use ACES. If you haven't watched my ACES tutorial, definitely give it a watch before continuing with this video because I'm going to use concepts that I explained in that tutorial. Now every image or video file has a certain color space with a specific color gamut and a gamma mapping. My GH5 footage has a color gamut called V gamut and a nonlinear gamma mapping called V log. My 360 camera takes individual photos which have the color gamut sRGB and a nonlinear gamma mapping. After I merge all the 360 photos, the resulting HDRI has the same color gamut sRGB, but my gamma mapping is now linear. To match our HDRI to our footage, we want both elements to have the same color space. This is where ACES comes in. We will apply a unique ACES Input Display Transform, or IDT, to our footage and HDRI. This will convert both to have the same ACES color space. So to begin this process, I'm going to jump into the free version of Nuke, because Nuke is really good when it comes to color management. So here in Nuke, we'll go to the project settings. Then in this color tab, we can tell Nuke to use ACES. Then I'll press R in this area to read in the GH5 footage. If I then click on the read node, I can see this input transform option. This is where we will select the ACES IDT to convert our footage into the ACES CG color space. In this case, we'll select an IDT called Input Panasonic V-Log V-Gamut. Now how do you know what IDT to use for your camera? First, search Google for correct ACES IDT for your camera name with color profile name that you use. And just know that there are only ACES IDTs made for the most popular log and raw color profiles. And here's another neat check that you can do. Set up your camera and record footage of a scene at the correct exposure, plus two stops overexposed, and minus two stops underexposed. In Nuke, I have the footage and I've selected the ACES IDT I want to test. Here I've split out the correctly exposed, overexposed, and underexposed footage. If I add an exposure effect to our correct exposure, and I change the adjustment to stops, I can add two stops. Zero plus two stops should look very similar to the original plus two stops from our camera, and they do. Similarly, I can apply this exposure effect here, and I can subtract four stops. 
two minus four stops should look very similar to the original minus two stops from our camera, and it's pretty close. Passing this test does not guarantee that you have the right IDT selected for your camera, but you know if you fail this test, you don't have the right IDT selected. Okay, back to Nuke. Next, I'll read in the HDRI. And then for this input transform, I will look for an ACES IDT called Linear sRGB. Next, we need to make the exposure and white balance of our HDRI match our footage. Here's how we'll do this. We have our footage and our HDRI, both with the color checker showing. We're going to sample the color of this gray patch in the footage, and then also in the HDRI. We can see the RGB values of these two gray colors, which are not matching. So I will multiply the HDRI by three values that will result in a color that will now match the other color. And with this multiplication applied to the entire HDRI, it will now match the footage. So in Nuke, let's look at our footage and we'll zoom in on this color checker. We can then hold Command or Control and Shift to sample the pixel values of this gray patch. I can see the RGB values down here. To record these values, I'll create a node called a sticky note and write down the values. Then let's view the HDRI. Zoom in on the color checker and let's now sample the same gray patch here. You can see these RGB values are quite different from the ones we've recorded. So let's add a multiply node and we'll click here to give us separate RGB controls. Now, starting with the red value, I'll adjust this till our HDRI is reading the same as the red value in our footage. Then I can do the same to match the blue and green values. And if you don't have a color checker, you can try matching by sampling a different part of the scene, like the concrete here. But now that things are matching, in theory, if I sample any part of the scene, say part of the sky, the color value should be exactly the same in our footage and HDRI. At this step, it's important that you don't add any major color grading to your footage or HDRI. Certain color grading adjustments like gamma will mess up the linear nature of our footage, taking away the benefits of this linear workflow. At this point, just stick to making adjustments using multiply operations such as gain, which keeps things linear. And of course, make sure to apply the same adjustments to both the footage and HDRI. But that's it for our work in Nuke. We've calculated these values to match our HDRI and footage, and we'll use these values as we jump into Blender. I have Blender configured for ACES. Check the description for a tutorial on how to do this. I have a camera in my scene, and I've set the background to my camera footage. This color space option here is our ACES IDT, and so I set it to the same Panasonic IDT we selected earlier. I've also aligned my camera to the proper perspective for the scene. Next, we'll go to the shader editor and select the world option here. I've opened that HDRI file we created in Photoshop, and again, the color space option here is the same thing as our ACES IDT, so we select linear sRGB. Now we want to apply the same color correction here that we applied to our HDRI in Nuke. To do this, we'll add a color mix node set to multiply with our HDRI plugged in. Make sure the factor is turned up to one. Then for this bottom color, we will copy the R, G, and B values that we calculated in Nuke. I found this really cool Dodge Charger model for free on BlendSwap. First, I'll open this model in its own blend file. I'm going to go through all the materials and look for any images being used. We want to make sure we're using the proper ACES IDT to convert all our materials properly into ACES. For any images which are part of the diffuse, color, or albedo of a material, we want to use the IDT Roll Matte Paint or Utility sRGB Texture. They do the same thing. For any images which drive the roughness, metalness, bump, displacement, etc., we will use the IDT named Roll Data or Utility Raw. They also do the same thing. Finally, for any parts of the materials that use an RGB color input, we need to convert this value into the ACES CG gamut. Unfortunately, Blender does not yet do this for us, so we'll have to do it manually. I've used this website to calculate the new values, which I'll link below. Back in our main blend file, I'll append the collection with our updated car model. Now let's go into rendered view to see how things are looking. We'll notice the lighting from our HDRI is a bit off. We don't have the brightness and shadows that we can see in our reference footage. When I captured the different exposures from my 360 camera, this was the darkest exposure the camera was able to capture, and you can see the sun looks like a large blob. 
the sun should look like a very small point in our darkest exposure, just like this. Unfortunately, most 360 cameras cannot be equipped with the necessary filters to capture such low exposures, so here's a quick workaround. First, in Photoshop, I'm going to cover up the bad sun in our HDRI. To do this, I'll add an exposure adjustment so I can see the sun more easily. Then let's add an empty layer over our background. Let's select a color picker and make sure we set the sample mode to current and below no adjustments. Then let's go into the gradient tool and we'll go into the color settings. For the left value, we'll select an area just outside the sun flare, and for the right, we'll select an area a bit further from the sun. Then make sure to have selected the radial gradient type and we'll drag out a gradient from the center of our sun. Then let's turn the layer off and select the ellipse tool, select path for the mode, and let's draw a mask around the sun and hit mask. Turn the layer back on and we can select our new mask and increase the feather amount in the properties window. Now we have effectively taken out the bad sun. Let's turn off the exposure adjustment and save out a new HGRI radiance file. Back in Blender, we'll swap in this new HDRI without the sun in it. Now we're going to create our own sun object. We'll dial in this strength value later, but for now let's eyeball it. Then we'll rotate the sun to align the shadows with how they appear in our reference footage. You can increase the sun angle value if you want the shadows to be softer, but my reference shadows are sharp, so I'll keep this value low. Now, how do we know how bright this sun should be? What I can do is download a special EXR graphic of the color checker and bring this into Blender using the Image as Planes tool. In the material settings, our IDT is set to ACES CG, which is correct since this EXR is in ACES CG. I will adjust the roughness of my material to 0.8, then I'm going to position this color checker in roughly the same position and angle as the real color checker we filmed. Let's look through the main camera in the render view and we'll create a small render region just for our color checker. Oh, and let's turn off our floor plane for now. Let's hit render, and in the render result window, if we right click and hold, we can sample the pixel values of this gray patch here. Here our values are reading around 0.23, and remember in our footage, our gray patch is reading around 0.28. So from here, we just want to increase the strength of the sun till this gray patch reads around 0.28. Now let's turn our floor plane back on and our lighting is looking a lot closer to our reference. For our floor material, I'm going to simply project our footage onto this plane. To do this, I'll add a project UV modifier, select the default UV map and select the camera for our projection object. Then for the aspect X and Y, we'll set 16 and 9, since the footage we're projecting has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. We'll also add a subdivision surface modifier set to simple and place this before our UV project modifier. This just makes sure we have enough detailed geometry to accurately project onto. Next, here is the material setup. This node is the footage of my clean plate, again set to have that Panasonic IDT. Then I've added an RGB curves node to match the colors a bit more, and I've raised the roughness slightly on this shader node. This technique of projecting the footage onto the floor plane won't always work this well. In some cases, you might have to create your own shader to recreate the floor material. Now let's set this plane as a shadow catcher, and in the render passes tab, let's enable the shadow catcher render pass. Through the car windows, we're seeing the HGRI which doesn't look realistic, so I'll duplicate this floor plane, place it in the background, and uncheck the shadow catcher property. Let's duplicate this projection material and change this to an emission shader, and I will delete the RGB curves. Then we only want this plane to be visible through the windows, so in the Object Properties tab, we'll uncheck all the visibility options except for Transmission. Now we're ready to hit Render. Don't worry if you don't see the shadow being rendered out. On the final render, the shadow information will be hiding in this shadow pass that we enabled. Finally, we'll save out this render as an open EXR multi-layer file. Now the beauty of all this setup is that compositing is going to be super simple. In a new blend file, let's go into the compositing tab and check use nodes. We'll then read in our background footage, change some of the frame settings here, and again we'll set the ACES IDT to the Panasonic one. Then we'll also read in our car render which should have an ACES IDT set to ACES CG. First, let's work with our shadow pass, which we can view by control plus shift and clicking this node multiple times. 
This is a relatively new pass in Blender, and it's really cool because this pass not only captures the shadow darkness, but also the color of the shadows. To composite this pass properly, we'll add a color mix node set to multiply, and we'll multiply the background footage by this pass. Next, we'll simply add an alpha over node and place our background in the top input and our car in the bottom. Now let's compare what we have here so far with our reference. I think for our first tweak, our shadows should be darker. To do this, we'll add a gamma node to the shadow pass and increase the value slightly. Then I want to adjust the color of our car since it looks a bit too magenta. So we'll add a color balance node and adjust the gain away from magenta. Then I think our shadows could be a bit more blue. So let's add another color balance node. And here we don't want to adjust the gain. We want to stick with only using the gamma adjustments just like before. To render out our final comp, make sure your composite is hooked up to the composite node. I will set an output type of OpenEXR and name the file output. Then hit render animation. Now for the final color grading. In DaVinci Resolve, I will go into the project settings and in the color management tab, I will set the color science to ACES and set our output transform to sRGB. I'll import the EXR of my final render then we can right click the EXR, go to ACES Input Transform, and select ACES CG. This is the ACES IDT. Next, in the Color tab, I can add some nice color grading. Finally, I'll go into the Export tab, select H264, and I can render out my final shot. So there you have it, the full workflow. Now your homework is to go download those free assets and try adding that car to the shot in the shade. Now for this one, you don't have to replace the sun in the HDRI because it's not visible. And when you have your results, send them to me on Instagram or Twitter, and I will send you my ACES Kickstart Kit for free. All right, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.